Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel Cooks by Carrie. If you're new here, I'm Carrie and for today's Foodie Friday video, I'm sharing how to make these delicious mini apple pies and the recipe comes from the New York Times. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Alrighty, for today's recipe, you're going to need butter, apples, ground allspice, ground cinnamon, kosher salt, sugar, flour, cornstarch, apple cider vinegar, you're going to need a recipe of pie dough. I will link my recipe for pie dough in the comments down below or the description. And an egg. And that is all. So the first step that I will be showing is combining the sugar, um, the salt, and the spices together. Well, this is not the first step in the recipe. I did do this first because... The other stuff is like melting stuff in a saucepan. And I felt like if I mix this up before, then it will be good prep work. So then once we go to the saucepan in a minute, I'll have all my things all ready to go. Also, you can see that there were a few clumps of sugar in my mixture, but that's totally fine because since we're going to be cooking this down, reducing it, those clumps won't really matter because the sugar is going to turn into a liquid. Okay, for this next step here, I'm turning on my pan, and it says about medium-high, but I just went with medium because I felt like medium-high was a little bit hot. As always, a chef tip is to make sure that your vent fan is on. It's always a good idea to keep this on while you're cooking because it can prevent, like, um... Actually, I don't really why I turned it on, but it has a purpose, so just definitely make sure to do it. I, it's definitely for... Something. I don't know. Sometimes when it smells gassy, you know, you can turn the vent on and then it won't smell as gassy. But anyway, basically you're going to add in your butter and let it um, melt down and then add in all your apples and stir to coat. The next step, which I show in the next shot, will be to add in the sugar mixture. But at this point, you just want to make sure that the apples are all coated in the butter and they all look like one combined mixture. Alrighty, so now that I've mixed them all together, I'm going to go ahead and add in the sugar, and then I'm going to stir this to coat. After I do this, I'm going to cook this until the apples have started to soften, and this takes about five to seven minutes. It's a long time, I know, but this is like the most task-heavy step other than making, um, like forming the crust, but I mean, I think, I believe that all of you guys, even if you've never made a pie before, can definitely uh, do this recipe with the tips I I provide so anyway just make sure that the fruit is all coated all nice and then stir occasionally for five to seven minutes now that that is all cooked down and reduced and you can see that there's a liquid at the bottom i'm going ahead and adding in the cornstarch and flour then you're going to stir that all together and continue to coat to coat to cook for another three to five minutes Now it's time to remove the apples from heat and pour them into a bowl. So I'm pouring them all in. And the recipe says that at this point, after we add the one last ingredient, which is the um, apple cider vinegar, you can transfer this onto a tray and let it cool that way. But I felt like since there was like, liquid in this that I don't know why they suggest to use a tray I mean they said that it will cool faster but I don't really see the point in letting it cool faster if um it's like on a tray because then the liquid goes everywhere and also I don't know why I didn't show pouring on the apple cider vinegar but I'm like pretty sure I included it so don't worry about that but at this point I stuck mine in the freezer and then just checked it after like 10, 15 minutes, and then I pulled it out because you just want it to be like room temperature, all cooled down. You could also put this in the fridge if you want to. All right, guys, and before we continue with, with this video, please subscribe, leave a thumbs up, comment down below if you'd like to see next, and share this video with a friend. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell so you get notified when I post a new video. I have a goal of 100 subscribers. If you could please help me that, that'd be greatly appreciated. All right, let's continue with this video. Now it is time to roll out the pie dough. Now, if you're wondering, Carrie, why is yours like cut in half? 
Well, that's because I didn't want to wrap my pie dough in like two separate discs. So I just made one big disc and then I just cut it in half. Now I'm making mini pies in this video. So I'm going to share how I did that. But it is a lot of work, but they do turn out really cute in the end. So it depends on what you want to do. If you want to just make a regular pie, like one big pie, you're just going to roll out your pie dough really thin, not really thin, but in like a large sheet and then drape it over your pie dish and then kind of cut around the edges and then you'll just add the top in um as like one big giant piece and just you'll cut some holes in the top the recipe probably mentions how to do it better if i didn't explain it well but hopefully you guys understand what i'm saying but since i was like let me make some mini pies what i did is i rolled out the dough and then i found a circular i believe i use a bowl to cut out the circle so you can be really resourceful with this if you don't have a specific um cookie cutter or like something that works just use whatever you have on hand it doesn't even have to have very sharp edges because as long as it's going to get that circle you can always use a knife to cut around it or something like that so don't this is a good lesson for cooking don't think just because you don't have like one um like object or like why do I keep wanting to say technique? Something is going wrong in my brain. Like, you know, this I'm not thinking of the correct, like, synonyms for things. But um, tools, that's what I was trying to say. Just because you might not have the right tools, you can still definitely make a lot of things. So, yeah, you just want to cut all of the circles out. And then I will show how to put them into the muffin tins. And the muffin tin is what I use to make the pie small. And I got 12 mini pies from this recipe. And here are all the pie crusts. Now, they don't, they're not the most uniform, but like they were so delicious. So it doesn't really matter how they look, even if they kind of drape over the edges a little bit or something like that. And mine were a little bit thin, but that is totally fine. They still ended up with a really good crust in the end and were so delicious. So anyway, what you want to do here is you're going to want to crimp all the edges. So just with a fork, just crimp them all. And the purpose of this, I believe, I mean, I don't know the exact reason, but to me, I've always thought that the reason I do this is to just ensure that the pie crust is gonna stick and it's not gonna like leave the edges. But I think it's also like, it looks pretty. So it has two purposes. Okay, now here was the most time consuming part. Now I am going to begin cutting strips to make a lattice crust. I've showed how to do this in my blueberry pie video, which I will link down below, and maybe even more pie videos. I can't exactly remember, but I've definitely showed it before. But basically a lattice crust is like a crisscrop, almost like a basket weave type top. And on a normal pie, it's annoying, but like it's not that bad. On the minis, it was pretty hard i'm not gonna lie it took a lot of time but they did look super cute in the end so like if you're willing to put in the effort i would definitely recommend it but if you're looking for more of a simple easier way i would recommend just cutting circles out with the dough like we just did for the base and then you just plop one on top and then just crimp uh, not crimp just cut some holes on the top i do it for some of my pies so you'll probably see me um but basically both ways are cool. Both ways look good. Lattice does look better, but again, just takes a lot of time. So there's pros and cons. So anyway, to cut the lattice pieces or lines, I rolled it out pretty thin, not completely thin, but you want to, you don't want it to be super thick. And then I cut off the dirty looking edges. And by dirty, I mean like they're just not straight. So I made straight edges. And then I took a bread knife. You can really use any knife. And what I call my bread knife is a serrated knife, but it really doesn't matter. It's just like one of the longest knives I had and I felt comfortable using it on my counter. However, I suggest that you probably do this on like a cutting board or like a mat or something like that because it's probably not the best idea to drag a knife across your countertop. Um, but anyway, you just want to cut your strips and I wanted to do some really thin and then some like a little thicker so there'd be some variation when i um made the crust top so if you want to do something cool like that you can i think that when people get like really creative with the lattice crust tops it looks so, it looks so beautiful like i've seen so many pictures on instagram of people's pies where they do like different colors of like the lattice pieces or like they have like these like rollers that they roll 
over the pie crust and it makes these like beautiful patterns or like last year I saw this one and they did really super thin lattice pieces and it looked so beautiful in the end that's why I've like really wanted to try it on my own this wasn't like super successful it didn't look as good as that one I saw last year but it was so pretty and then they coated it in like this like gold um like powder so like it was all shiny and it looked so beautiful but anyway the point of this story is just that you can get really creative with it and even if you just want to put like the plain you know circle on top you can even get creative like with that like if you have a small cookie cutter you can cut some like cut the hole out before instead of like just using a knife to like cut some um holes in it and what I mean by that is like my mom show once in a while like maybe once a year or like she used to make a chicken pot pie and then she'd cut a bunny to be like the hole in the top out of a cookie cutter instead of being like um just the what I said before to make it like more fun and like just prettier so you can really get fit as fancy with it as you want and right now you're probably wondering, Carrie, why did you start this clip without explaining that you filled the pies? Well, I just want to keep it rolling because I felt like the story was good and, um, you know, just that it kind of gets repetitive if you really want to watch it, a lot of extra time of just watching me cut the strips. So I thought that I'd just segue into this one. And as you saw earlier in this clip, I filled all the um, apple pies and yes I did use my hands to kind of move them around but like they were completely clean so it's okay and then I just am slowly putting the lattice crust on and I just show one because it, it gets a little repetitive and I actually don't show putting any of the circle tops on but those are pretty self-explanatory um, as I just explained and you can see that one was my best one I think and then at the end they look so beautiful like this and I'm sorry my camera died but basically um what I'm doing here is I'm adding in the egg wash and then sprinkling on the sugar. And when I say I'm sorry that my camera died, I meant like I did it on my own. I was just mocking it here to like show you what I was doing. But they looked so cute. And yeah, they are they a little messy? Yes. But like they have this homemade look and they look so beautiful and they were so delicious. And now it is time to put them into the oven. So after all of my hard work with those mini pies, I suck them into the oven and it recommended to put a tray under. Now the tray under is mostly for, I think, if you have like one pie in case it explodes, but mine did kind of leak a little bit, so I'd still recommend doing the tray if you were doing mini pies like me. But basically you want to cook them. The, the instructions tell you how to cook them for like a big pie, but what I did is 375 for about 20 minutes and they were completely done, minis. There are different instructions on the website that you should consult if you want to do a big pie. And now it's finally time to take them out of the oven. They looked so golden brown and I was so happy with them and they were so delicious, guys. I mean, just jaw dropping, so fun. The perfect apple pie recipe for Thanksgiving, which is coming up if you celebrate that, or just really a perfect fall recipe in general. It looks so beautiful and we're so tasty. One teeny thing to note is that it is kind of hard to get them out. Like, you probably will poke holes in the bottom when you are using a knife to, like, scrape it around and get it out. But you can't really tell when you put them on a plate, so it shouldn't matter too much to your presentation. And that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Cooks by Carrie because I post lots of fun photos of the food I cook. And make sure to do all those fun YouTube things that I described earlier in the video. Like, comment, subscribe, turn that notification bell on, share this video with a friend. And I will see you on Friday for a new Foodie Friday video. Bye, guys.